Timer's not moving. Oh, there it goes. Here it goes. Here we go. Chem 2700, experiment number one, thin-layer chromatographic analysis of drugs or painkillers, if you prefer. So we're going to do thin-layer chromatography, and I have a silica sheet here. Come zoom in on this. What we need to do is we need to have a starting point for our compounds that we put on the plate. We need that to be about a centimeter and a half from one end of the plate. So I'm going to arbitrarily put four little spots right here. These are the places where I'm going to put the compound. You use a tiny little capillary tube, if you can see that. And through the magic of capillary action, we can quickly draw up a little tiny bit of the solution and holding the capillary vertical, dab it to the plate, and we now have our first compound on the plate. Away we go. After we do caffeine, we have acetaminophen. Notice I'm putting the capillary in a little vial of acetone to clean it in between each sample. So once again, a little dab, touch the plate on that pencil spot, clean the capillary, cap the vials please, let's try not to make too much of a mess. There are painkillers, nobody's going to get harmed, and the solution is methanol. Once again, clean the capillary tube, dip into the third solution, spotting on the third spot. Drain the capillary tube back into the acetone to clean it. Cap the vial. Preferably return it to the front so your classmates have something to work with too. Once again, cleaning the capillary into the ibuprofen this time. And that is our last spot. Drain the capillary into the acetone and close the vial. Now. In this jar, we have a little bit of solvent. The solvent mixture is hexane, ethyl acetate, and acetic acid. But before we put the plate in there and allow the solvent to flow up the plate and move the spots, we need to check that we have enough compound. So, using the magic of ultraviolet light, I can see that I have four dark spots on my plate. And notice, do not look into the light. And what's even sillier is the warning is on the wrong side. <laughs> and off we go. Carefully open your jar. Pop the plate into the solvent. Don't worry about being careful. In it goes. Now, don't touch it. If you jostle it, you'll mess it up. So, now we wait. <laughs> Tell jokes. Oh. Welcome back after the break. So here we are. Our solvent has run up to the plate. So take the lid off, pop it out, and very quickly, remembering to put the lid back on the jar because we don't want everybody to get too high in the fumes, we quickly trace the solvent front. This tells us how far the solvent went, and it is important information that we need to know. Now, we come over here to the ultraviolet light, and we can now see how far our spots moved under the ultraviolet light. What's even more important is that you must circle the exact size and shape of the spot. In particular, remembering that light little guy up there, and we put a dot in the middle. What we're going to be doing to get the RF value, which is the retardation factor, we will be measuring how far the spot traveled from its origin, and that distance divided by how far the solvent traveled gives us a ratio. The ratio is unique to each compound and is called the retardation factor. Thus ends the first plate. You will continue the experiment by analyzing Tylenol, Motrin, and Advil and telling us what the active ingredient is. After that, on a third plate, you will do an unknown sample and you must tell us what the chemical component is in the unknown sample. There may be more than one. Happy TLCing! See you in the lab.